drop me an email and I will be very happy to discuss. Um, okay, uh, there are many paths to quantum thermodynamics, and I come from a quantum information community uh, where we use information theoretic approach to study thermodynamics. Uh, we are interested in non asymptotic behaviors of quantum nanoscale systems, and uh, this non uh, this non asymptotic thermodynamic is especially crucial to the nanoscale uh, devices and to the nanoscale information processing unit in particular. Definitely, we do not want to uh, dissipate too much heat in the information processing and burn up the chips. Uh, studies of dynamics in this regime require the use of uh, smooth entropies to capture fluctuations. Um, in the extreme case, we study only one shot of uh, the experiment, and we want to guarantee the world cost instead of just observing its average value. This regime is sometimes referred to as the single shot or one shot. Uh, consider the example, I have a worker who aim to lift the box uh, from the ground to the table, but half of the time the workers just threw the box too high, but and the other half of the time the worker just broke the box too low. But on average, uh, the, 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 the average work cost uh, just meet our requirement. Um, this is definitely not what we want, right? So we uh, invented, not we, no, so people invented uh, smooth max and mean work to characterize the performance. The smooth mean um, work is the work, work uh, done is at least this much, expect, except for a uh, error probability epsilon. Um, my talk today is for one shot regime instead of the RD thermodynamic limit. So information is encoded into patterns that deviate from thermal fluctuations. So intuitively, the more accurate the information processing is, the more cost it requires. And in this work, we want to rigorously justify this observation, and we want to explicitly reveal the trade-off between the cost and the accuracy. Moreover, we will use our results to demonstrate um, some dynamic advantage of quantum devices in certain tasks. So our goal is to characterize the non-equilibrium cost of accurate information processing. And uh, so there are three questions should be addressed. First, uh, how to quantify the non-equilibrium resources. Uh, second, how to model information processing tasks and how to benchmark its accuracy. So let us begin with the mathematical model we used to uh, information tasks. An information processing task aim to build a design relation between inputs and outputs. For example, the choose value table of the AND operation uh, all possible inputs and outputs correspond, correspondence uh, specify the uh, AND operation. For quantum information processing, we have quantum states as input and quantum state as output. So we can specify uh, the information processing task by specifying all possible input output state transformations. Here, this row x to row x prime where x is a label. Uh, for example, let's consider quantum cloning that aims to output or generate additional dead end copies of the same unknown pure state. So this for this is whole for arbitrary pure state. So there are infinitely many state transformations to specify quantum cloning. And because we know that the, because the no cloning theorem, there is no quantum channel that can perfectly implement the task. Uh, so the dimension here we use for information processing goes beyond the quantum channel. Okay, then how to characterize, um, how to evaluate any real implementation for uh, aiming for accomplishing the desired task. So uh, we use an operational test. Suppose there is a machine uh, M and uh, it output this. So we just ask how similar of the real output by given by the machine M to uh, the, the desired output real X prime. And uh, our measurement uh, will give us a score. And uh, we use this worst case score to quantify the accuracy uh, of the machine M. So when the output is pure, and in this case, we choose OX equal to OX prime, which is a projector, then this is the fidelity. And in this case, 
as becomes the worst case fidelity. Now coming back, uh, how to quantify the thermodynamic resources. Um, we use a resource theoretical approach. So resource theory is a mathematical framework used to quantify resources, which has wide applicability. It specifies uh, free states, which are states are free to uh, get, free to obtain. And it, says, it specifies free operations, uh, which are operations that has no cost to implement. Uh, then free operations are implemented by uh, non-free operations are implemented by free operations at the cost of resourceful states. And uh, in this theory, uh, in the resource theory, we need to answer how much resourceful states are needed to accomplish a uh, non-free operation. And we also, uh, is, uh, specifically in this uh, work, we use a resource theory of thermodynamics uh, given by the free states, which are Gibbs state at temperature T and free operations are Gibbs preserving maps or Gibbs preserving channels, which are channels that send Gibbs state to Gibbs state. So first of all, why we choose Gibbs state as free state? Because it's the only uh, complete passive state that no matter how many uh, copies of the state is given, uh, you cannot extract work from it. Uh, then why uh, Gibbs preserving map? Because otherwise a Gibbs state will be mapped to a non-Gibbs state. And uh, you can repeat the process for many times and extract work from it. In fact, you can abstract arbitrary amount of work. And this leads to the collapse of the whole framework. So what you see here in general, specifying this is um, gives you the most general uh, framework of thermodynamics of resource theory. And this implies that any bound valid in this framework will also be valid in any other frameworks that has further restrictions. So we have widest applicability. So uh, we to count to count uh, how many uh, how much non equilibrium cost is there. We also use a battery model, which is called information battery. Um, the idea is that information is equivalent to energy, and the equivalence is established by Landau's principle and Szilard engine. Uh, this means that the uh, work cost of a process can be counted by how many uh, pure degenerate qubits are dissipated to mix, maximally mix state uh, after uh, the process. So to summarize, we need to find the minimal uh, number of pure qubits dissipated in the battery, which is regarded as the non-equilibrium cost, say here, uh, over all possible free operation, which are Gibbs preserving, so our machines are Gibbs preserving, which ensures no additional resources is uh, getting into the process. And um, uh, such that we minimize over all free operations, over all battery sizes, and over all thermal uh, ancillary uh, states, which gives you randomness, and uh, minimize that uh, such that the machine implements the design task with at least the fit, uh, accuracy F. So this problem can be can be made into a semi-definite programming, and uh, using the semi-definite programming technique, we get our mean result. Um, so our result is a fundamental bound on the non-equilibrium cost of any possible machine that has uh, accuracy at least f. So the non-equilibrium cost is bounded by the lower sum of its accuracy and a reverse entropy of the task that depends only on the task but not any specific implementation. Um, the task, the definition of universal entropy is quite uh, technical and complicated, but we will see a simple, simple case to understand it. So for the special case with complete degenerate Hamiltonian, uh, the Gibbs state now becomes magnetic state. Now to every direct task reacts to S prime, uh, we associate it with a reverse task that interchange the input and output. Um, now, uh, similar to definition of accuracy of the performance, we can define the accuracy of the reverse process. Maximizing the, 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 the all possible quantum mechanical implementations, we can have the highest uh, uh, achievable performance for the reverse process. And now the reverse entropy is given by some negative of the logarithm of this maximal uh, accuracy of the reverse process. So our bound actually uh, connects the forward and backward process. 
Now let's uh, see a simple example. For lambda three razor, we want to transform the complete max mix state to pure state zero and uh, uh, the reverse type is summarized for pure state to maximum mix state. The maximum accuracy of the reverse task is one half is calculated. Then substitute this into a bound. We have generalized lambda principle for imperfect erasure. So erasing one bit of information imperfectly costs slightly less than one kt ln two. Uh, we can also use our result our framework to establish uh, some dynamic advantage of per, uh, to process information using quantum devices. So for if given information, quantum information processing task with quantum input and quantum output, there are two ways to implement it. One is coherent processing and the other is made by classical devices that first measure the input and get it into classical information, process it and depend on the result, prepare the desired output quantum state. Um, this process is entanglement breaking and we call it incoherent processing and that this incoherent processing costs more energy. Just so a uh, reminder that you enter the question time. Yes. Yes. So, what? Well, I'll just come yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Please. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, we derive the most stringent bound and we prove that mm -hmm. for common cloning, this particular task, the bound is strictly larger. So, we establish a quantum thermodynamic advantage for cloning, uh, for, for replicating information. And uh, to conclude, uh, we establish a fundamental trade-off between non-equilibrium cost and accuracy. So the bound is given by what we call the reverse entropy. Its bound is tied for many cases. And uh, we, we also establish, use it, establish a quantum uh, advantage. Uh, with this, I conclude my talk and thanks for listening. Okay, thank you very much for uh, this uh, very interesting uh, talk. Uh, we will have time for uh, one or max two very quick uh, questions, if there are questions, or the question could be posted uh, later. Uh, I think uh, there's a question here, so. It's like uh -huh. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is uh, um, how do you compute non-equilibrium cost TF to find this inequality? Yes, so so we just minimize this. This is written in quantum state. So we put uh, all the uh, uh, problem into this framework, and it becomes a linear algebra of of minimizing the quantity such that these transformations are possible. So we solve kind of linear problems and find the results. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I would suggest that we could now move to the next uh, talk uh, by Anton Munson, who will be speaking about work rates of with complexity in computationally restricted thermodynamics. So uh, the floor is yours. All right, let me just share my screen.